Now item seven is by far the item that you're gonna be spending the most time on. And this is where management goes item by item, line by line, through the financial statements describing precisely what's going on. And in a lot of ways, there's tons of courses on how to read the financial statements. And perhaps if you're a complete beginner, which all of us start right there at the beginning, um, go through those courses, but there is nothing like actually going through item seven and being walked through the financials of company after company to really start to understand how the three statements work together. Item seven typically starts going through the income statement via the segments that are described in previous sections and will go through every single part of the financial statements, including the composition of debt. Seven, this is where it's really gonna help to have the income statement balance sheet and cash flow statement separated out so you can use that to help you understand what management is saying in this section. And a lot of times, even if these things are clearly broken out in those three consolidated statements of financials, you'll see these mini tables that they produce to try to help you understand that one line item that's on those three documents. So take your time going through item seven. It is the most important section, in my opinion, in the entirety of the um, of the uh, document, the 10K. Now, if I were to give you some questions that you should answer for yourself as you're going through, I would say, number one, after you've read through item seven, do you feel like management explained to you the different segments of their business and what those individual segments look like if you were to even split them out separately as businesses? That's really so that you can appreciate what management is saying from an income statement perspective. You also want to ask yourself if there's multiple segments, how do these three segments actually benefit each other? And sometimes it can be there's cost savings across the three businesses in SG&A, uh, selling general administrative. And sometimes it can be because the three businesses are strategic to each other. But what you're trying to do is understand the story of the income statement. How does this company uh, make sales? Uh, what's it cost to make those sales? And how do I bring it all the way down to the bottom line for us, the investors? Now, interestingly enough, there's uh, huge sections here that I always monitor as relates to debt. And what I'm really trying to understand is how's this debt gonna get paid? It's actually no different than personal finance. You wanna appreciate when is the debt due? There was always a chart in this item seven section that goes through and tells you when precisely um, the debt is due from a term structure perspective. And then there often is a chart as well that tells you which precise piece of debt and what the interest rate is on that debt so you can follow along as to how management might be using its capital. If it's an asset rich industry, you're gonna watch them plug right along, right down, line item by line item in the balance sheet on what those assets are and how they add up and what even is the depreciation amortization that's gonna happen, um, how old those assets are, that sort of thing. So it can be very telling and even more than any textbook or anything else, just seeing what different companies are doing in the way of depreciation and amortization, what these assets are on the books as can be so informative when you're thinking about companies across industries or across business. Now, I always think the cash flow statement is one of the harder ones to learn, um, except almost as an afterthought when you learn it in the more traditional way of going through the financial statements. But if you are going through item seven, the cash flow statement ends up being something that is a bit more front and center. It'll be discussed, it'll be talked about. Use of capital is a big job for the CFO. The whole point is to allocate capital most efficiently and in a way that is most beneficial to um, the shareholders. So cash flow, if it, that is a statement hasn't made great sense to you, reading item seven and understanding how things are flowing through um, the 10K is gonna help you more than probably your professor can. My last note on item seven is that it does take reading a few of these to find little things in it that are a bit confusing or a little strange. And so, you know, just take your time going through it if it's your first time reading a 10K. But if there's anything that doesn't feel fully clarified once you're through item seven, that's something to really take note of and see if you can hunt down further. If you're a deep dive type person, you can even ask the IR team, um, hey, I didn't totally understand this. 
some IR teams will get back to you, especially for smaller companies. Um, some of the larger companies also have extensive, it really can vary, but it is a really good question if you feel you've uh, finished those financial statements and somehow don't understand something, that should not be the case.